we're going to do a pelvis exam for trauma, a clinical exam for pelvis for trauma. So the first part of it is you want to like take their legs, put them down here, and look for leg length discrepancies, and look for internal rotation of one of the two legs, which would indicate that they possibly had a hip dislocation. Then you're going to do the AP compression, and you'd like to do this while they're still on the board, because you can really push it really oh. hard. And then you're going to do your lateral compression. Now you got to keep in mind that if they have an open book pelvic pressure, if it's all broken here, then these two sides open up like two parts of a big fat dictionary. Because the weight of each leg are gonna, is going to contribute to the two sides of the board. So on a little person, you got to look at how much their legs weigh and how big they are. Okay, they're good. you got to think how much weight, how much do each of these weigh, and how much am I going to have to push to get the two sides back together. So I really put my elbow into my into my body okay. and push hard. You can feel me pushing this together, right? Because mm -hmm. I want to, if you have someone who has a really big leg, the weight of those two legs is pulling them apart. And you got to overcome that weight to bring these together. So the, the lateral compression is really almost, it's, it's it's medial and it's a little bit anterior, just like you're closing a big dictionary. Okay. Then you're going to take the base of your hand, and you're going to sort of move down until you feel. Do you find the symphysis pubis? And this is even better when they're still on the backboard. Push on their symphysis pubis, and basically you're taking the whole ring, and you're taking the ring and you're squishing it between your hard hand and the really hard board. So if there's a break in the ring, that should hurt. So you're just looking for that. So you always want to come down, the base of your hand like this, don't grope upwards, because then you're fondling them. We don't want them to feel fondled, we want them to feel examined, not fondled, <laughs> right? Okay. Yeah. I'll take their base and I can get it. <laughs> so then you do, so then the next part is examining the acetabulum, and the, you can't feel her acetabulum, you can't get in there, it's like the deepest part of this. So you're going to use her femur to examine her acetabulum. So you're going to use the femoral head, as you rotate it around, you're going to get an exa examination of the posterior and anterior parts of the acetabulum. So, like I said, you can either roll this to get the internal and external rotation, like that, and they should go about the same, and that should be not painful, and if they say pain, you say where, because if it's on the knee, where there's always scrapes, then you say, okay, what about the hip? No, hip doesn't hurt, okay. I like to have them relax their legs a lot and then support support their knee and ankle, and then rotate just this high off the bed, and use the force of my thumb to move them, so in case they have like a knee injury or an ankle injury, I'm not stressing the knee, which might be hurt also, to get this to rotate. So this is how I'm rotating that. So that's how you get the posterior and anterior parts of the acetabulum, looking for them to say whether or not they have pain here in the hip. And then you just take their leg like this, bend it up, and just load their femur. And that seems like I'm hitting her really hard, but the weight she puts on it just standing up is way more force than what I just exerted. And you're just, that's the roof of the acetabulum. So you're sending the femur, I'll send my head up into the roof of the acetabulum, try to see if there's a fracture at the top. And so you say, does that hurt? Does no. See, it doesn't hurt. Even though it looks really vicious, it doesn't hurt. If you really can't, because they have this big laceration here, you can, when they don't have those shoes on, yeah, yeah. Um, like load them in that from the foot, if they don't have anything else here, but they have a big lack here. So that's the front, Then you go around to the back, and then as you're doing the spine, you're going, is this hurt, does it hurt, does it hurt, blah, 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 all the way down. And when you get to the bottom of the spine, there's the, see some people have little dimples here? Yeah. These are the, this is the top of the SI joint, and right up here is the posterior, superior iliac crest or iliac spine. You're going to find the top of their SI joint, and you can feel it right in here. You're going to push there. So you want to feel like whether they have any SI Look. pain or dislocation, because usually if you have a break in the ring, a break in the front, then you have a break along the sacrum, because that's how it fails, especially with the lateral compression. So I feel the top of their SI joint, so does that hurt? And then I take my thumbs and I just push down like the first three or four inches of their sacrum, looking for pain along the sacrum. I don't go all the way out of the coccyx because I don't care about the coccyx and because it's somewhat invasive. Okay. Just like roping around in their groin in the front. I don't need to do that to them because that part's not that important. That's what I consider a good clinical exam. Is, is rectal exam a part of your pelvic exam? And what if you get blood on your rectal exam? So if I'm, if I'm concerned, 
I did a rectal exam. Uh -huh. So I was taught to do a rectal exam on everybody. You guys do a lot of like butt cheek squeezing, but yes, I do a rectal exam on everybody. Now, the only part of the pelvis that this exam misses is the inferior ramus, which runs, you know, along the inside of the groin. But to like get somebody to like sit here and you reach up in here and you palpate that, it just feels like so much invasiveness for so little yield. Because you're trying to like groping around in their perineum trying to find that inferior ramus. You can find it on yourself at home. But to try to find that and then palpate that. And if they have an <laughs> inferior ramus fracture, it's not operative anyway. Nobody cares about those. So like the yield on that is slow. And so I don't do that. But if you have somebody who has a big fracture, um, or you're really concerned about bony fragments, you can do a rectal exam, you can feel the inferior rami that way. Again, I don't do that on normal people because I don't think they can distinguish the discomfort of having somebody's finger up their bottom with like the, oh, yeah, well, that rami, that side really, really hurts. More so than just being invaded in that way. You know, they just don't say that. They're like, ah, every time they get a rectal exam. But you can also, on a woman, you can also do a vaginal exam, different club, and just palpate along the rami through the vaginal wall if you're looking for bony fragments. But just looking for fractures, I don't, because okay. it's just too much invasiveness for not enough gain. Okay, and just for the last time, what are your indications for a pelvic X-ray? So for, you mean a, an AP pelvis? Uh, a trauma X-ray Yeah, pelvis. portable. Portable yes. pelvis portable. is hemodynamic instability, or because of our protocol, it's a blunt red, or I can't rule out a hip dislocation based on my exam. You know that I, I can rotate it a little bit, but I can't rotate this leg as far. Yeah. She's like, ah, that really hurts. Versus this side, I can go all the way in, all the way out. This side, I can't. Or she's got some, you know, like internal rotation and shortening. Or this is so broken that I can't do any of this test. Because like, she's got a femur fracture here, this foot's falling off. I can't isolate out this, I can't use the femur to examine the S tendon, so I can't, I can't tell. I just can't tell. Or she's intubated and I don't have that part of the exam. Mm -hmm. You know, I just can't do it, so then you gotta do it to rule it out. And dislocation, you rule it by moving the leg, you said, and also by the length? Mm -hmm. Leg length discrepancy, so the shorter one, because remember it's usually, it's usually dislocated out the back. So the shorter one is the, is the bad one, and it's usually, internally rotated like that, so it's shorter. And you can't get it all the way up. I can't, you can't do this to them. They don't come all the way out equal. No. Or they don't, you know, you can, you can rotate them a little bit. You can do some like inward rotation, but you can't do this. They won't go out because they're, you know, the, the head is like jutted out this way. So you can kind of rotate them in a little bit. When you try to go out, they just, they can't do it. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Yeah, my pleasure. Thank you.